Mungu awabariki wapendwa na wasalimu katika jina la Bwana Yesu Kristo huku nikiamini ya kwamba Mungu kwa neema zake angali anawalinda. Wacheni tuombe kwa ajili ya neno la Bwana. Baba wetu wa mbinguni katika jina la Bwana Yesu Kristo tunakushukuru kwa jinsi ambavyo ulivyo mwema. Hakuna Mungu mwingine kama wewe wa kusifiwa kuinuliwa na kuabudiwa. Twasema ni asanti Bwana kwa ajili ya wokofu ambao umetupea. Tunasema ni asanti kwa sababu ya ukombozi na msamaha wa dhambi na afya ambayo umetukirimia zote kwa jia ya msalaba katika Kristo wakati Bwana wetu wa mbinguni ulitulipia gharama miaka elfu mbili iliyopita. Sasa hivi Bwana twakuja mbele ya uwepo wako tukiomba kibali kwa ajili ya neno lako na tunakuomba ya kwamba Bwana utaweza kumbariki mtazamaji wangu ambaye ananitazama akiwa pale nyumbani na mimi Bwana pia wa baba wa mbinguni utanisaidia kwa roho wako mtakatifu ili nikaweze kuyaleta haya mahubiri yawe faida kwa watoto wako ambao pengine hawawezi kukutanika katika makanisani mwetu lakini Bwana twakuomba utusaidie ili tukaweze kuwa na ushirika katika mitambo na hivyo naweka wakfu mitambo hii na tunajiweka wako zote kwa ajili ya neno lako Bwana na tunarugama dhambi zetu na makosa yetu na kitu ambacho chaweza Bwana wetu wa mbinguni kuzuia kubarikiwa na wewe Bwana wa mbinguni naomba ukatusamehe na ukatuondolee Asanti Bwana kwa vile umeendelea kuwalinda wapendwa makanisani mwote mwote tunakushukuru kwa ajili Bwana unawapenda watoto wako na umewalinda na tunajua kwamba hakuna kiti ambacho kitawadhuru Bwana uledaji wako katika Kristo unatutosha. Paulo alisema Bwana Yesu Kristo akiwa upande wetu hakuna jambo ambalo linaweza kutuguza. Kwa hivyo Bwana bariki usomaji na usikifu wa neno lako katika jina la Bwana Yesu Kristo tunaomba na kuamini. Bwana wabariki. Ninataka uh, kuongea uh, ujumbe unaitwa apply the token na nilisoma wakati wa Jumapili maandiko ya mwanzo 12 samahani wacha nikasahihishe hiyo maandiko hayo ambayo tulikuwa tuyasome siku ya Jumapili yalikuwa ni katika kitabu cha kutoka 12 mstari wa 13 ambayo ndiyo maandiko yale ambayo pia tutayasoma samahani na sahihisha maandiko tuliyosoma katika ujumbe uliopita wa Jumapili ilitakiwa kuwa kutoka 12 mstari wa 13 wala sio kitabu cha mwanzo 12 kama nilivyosema hapo awali. So, wacheni tusome maandiko yetu katika kitabu uh, cha kutoka 12 mstari wa 13 maandiko yale ambao tungeyasoma siku ile na ndio ninayasoma hata siku ya leo on Wednesday fellowship kwa sababu uh, ni ujumbe huo huo na jaribu kuchimba na kuendelea nao. <coughs> Maandiko inasema hivi katika kitabu cha kutoka 12 mstari wa 13. Na ile ndamu itakuwa ishara kwenu katika zile nyumba uh, mtakazokuwemo. Nami nitakapoiona ile damu nitapita juu yenu lisiwapate pigo lolote e, e, pigo lolote likawaharibu. Nitakapopiga inchi ya Misri. Hebu ni pia tusome maandiko katika kitabu uh, cha uh, matendo ya mitume uh, mlango wa kwanza na ule mustari wa nane. Uh, the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Ma, maandiko inasema Lakini mtapokea nguvu akisha kuwajulia ju, kwa ju, kwa juu yenu Roho Mtakatifu nanyi mtakuwa mashahidi wangu katika Yerusalemu na katika Uyahudi wote na Samaria na hata mwisho wa nchi. Bwana abariki usomaji wa neno lake. <coughs> Last Sunday we talked about hiding ourselves under the token. Tuliongelea kuhusu kujificha chini ya ishara. Lakini siku ya leo ninaongea kuhusu kuweka ile ishara. Maana yake hauwezi kujificha chini ya ishara kama haujui ishara hiyo na kama haujaiweka ishara hiyo na ni muhimu sana kujiweka ama kujificha chini ya ishara kwa sababu ni katika uh, chini ya ishara Mungu aliwapita wana wa Israeli wakati malaika wa maafa alipopita katika nchi ya Misri alipowaona zile nyumba za wana wa Israeli zilipokuwa na ishara ya damu 
aliwapita juu yao hakuwaguza hata mmoja lakini kwa Misri ambao hakukuwa na ishara ya damu katika nyumba zao a Mungu aliingia huko na malaika wake na kuleta maafa katika nyumba za wana wa Misri kwa hivyo tunaongea kuhusu kuiweka ishara last Sunday niliongea kuhusu eh, kuhusu kujificha chini ya ishara ni nimeona ni vyema tuongee kuhusu kuiweka ishara maana yake hauwezi kuwa chini ya ishara ama kujificha chini ya ishara ile wewe hauijui na ile wewe haujaiweka katika maisha yako na kwa hivyo <coughs> tuliona wana wa Israeli ya kwamba walikuwa wameambiwa na Mungu wakaweze kuweka katika milango mwao damu ya mwana kondoo iwe ishara kwao wakati malaika atakapopita akaweze kuwatenganisha na wana wa Misri angalia ndugu zangu angalia hii siri siri ya kuwekwa kwa ishara katika milango haikupeanwa kwa wa Misri bali siri hiyo ilipeanwa kwa wana wa Mungu wana wa Israeli ndivyo ilivyo katika siku ya leo siri ya ishara haitapeanwa kwa ulimwengu walakini itapeanwa tu kwa binti na wana wa Mungu ambaye ni bibi harusi wa Yesu Kristo ni siri kubwa ya kujua kuweka ishara kwa sababu katika ishara hiyo ndio unaepuka hukumu katika ishara hiyo ndio unapuka kifo ni katika ishara hiyo unayopukana na kaburi ni katika ishara hiyo unaebukana na kuzimu kwa hivyo ni siri kubwa sana kwa watoto wa Mungu angalia kwa wana wa, wa Misri ambao hawakujua siri hiyo waliangamia bwana wabariki na kwa hivyo tunakuja kujua ya kwamba hiyo ndiyo ilikuwa ishara ya agano la kale Jam, damu ya mwana kondoo ndio waliweka katika nyumba yao ili wakaweze kutofautishwa na uh, na kutofautishwa na wamisri na itachukua sisi nasi kujua ishara yetu ili tukaweze kutenganishwa na ulimwengu kwa sababu tunajua siku karibuni Mungu atakuja kuhukumu ulimwengu huu na kuharibu. Lakini tunajua ya kwamba Mungu hata halibu watoto wake ambao watakuwa chini ya ishara. Tunajua ya kwamba hata ulimwengu huu kabla hujafika kuharibiwa, Mungu atakuwa ameondoa watoto wake kwa ajili ya unyakuzi na kuwapeleka utukufuni na kuwaondoa katika dunia hii kabla ulimwengu huu haujaharibiwa ni mfano wa kule kuondolewa kwa wana wa Israeli, wa Israeli huko Misri wakiwa chini ya ishara naye Mungu ataweza kuondoa watoto, eh, watoto ata, ata, ataweza uh, kuwaficha watoto wake chini ya ishara ambayo tutakaiona hapo tutakapoendelea na ujumbe wetu ishara yako ya siku ya leo ni siku gani na kwa hivyo waliokuwa chini ya damu kule Misri malaika wa kifo alipokuwa anapita hakuwadhuru kwa sababu walikuwa wameweka ishara hiyo ndiyo ilifanya tofauti na uh, na kumfanya malaika wa kifo akaweze kujua uh, kujua tofauti ya wana wa Israeli na wana wa Misri wasingekuwa wameweka hiyo ishara malaika angewadhuru na nabii anasema hivi katika ujumbe <coughs> wa token ambao ulifuhubiliwa mwaka wa 64 Dallas paragraph 9 Nabii anasema hivi The token was the thing that made the difference between Egypt and Israel the two nation they were all human beings but still God created all they are hard work of God they were hard work of God but the difference when death penalty was passed the difference between life and death was the token and it will be at the coming of the son of god when he brings the bride out of the church the difference will be the token and now uh, unaona nabii anasema ya kwamba kile ambacho kilitofautisha wana wa Israeli na wa Misri ni ishara hiyo ya damu ambao nabii anaita the token it is the token that actually made the difference for the dead angel to know which house belonged to Israelites and which house belonged to the people of Egyptian 
belong to the people of Egypt. So we must have to know the token of the day that we are living. Because without that token, we will perish, my brethren. Na kwa hivyo, tunaona ya kwamba, wale walipewa ishara ya damu ya wanyama ambao ilikuwa ni ishara ya damu ya mwana kondo. Wewe, muaminio, wa agano jipia, ishara yako ni ipi? Ambayo mungu anakuhitaji wewe uweke. Kanisa la kale, kanisa la wana wa Israeli walipewa damu ya mwana kondo wakaweke ili iwe ishara kwao waokolewe. Wewe muaminio, you the believer of the New Testament, what is the token that the host God need you to actually apply? Ni ishara gani ambayo Mungu wewe ukiwa muaminio wa agano jipya anakuambia uweke? You can tell me quickly that brother Kimani I know that it is the blood of Jesus Christ which is true lakini usikwamie hapo nabii anasema it is not actually uh, the the literal blood of Jesus Christ but actually the life that came out of that blood which is the baptism of the holy ghost and i want to tell you that the token of the new testament believer that you ought to apply in your life is the baptism of the holy ghost is the life that came out of the blood ni ile uhai uliyotoka katika damu ya Yesu Kristo. Sasa sisi tunatakana kujua hivyo ya kwamba ishara ya muaminio wa agano jipya ni ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Na yule yeyote ambaye alipatikana kule Misri hakuwa chini ya damu ya mwana kondoo, aliangamia. Na wale ambao watapatikana wakiwa hawako chini ya ishara ya Roho Mtakatifu sababu ndio muhuri wa Mungu kwa watoto wa Mungu ataweza kuangamia. Nabii anasema hivi wakati ambapo anaongea kuhusu uh, ishara yetu kwa sababu unajua Yesu Kristo alikufa miaka elfu mbili iliyopita. Na kwa hivyo damu yake iliyomwagika pale msalabani Kalvari ilikauka. Na kwa hivyo tungewepa tukichechukua hiyo damu na kila mtu angepata chembechembe yake ya hiyo damu. Lakini kuna ule uhai ambao ulitoka katika huo damu na huo uhai ndio unaambiwa uweke ishara na uhai huo jinsi ya kuupata ni kupokea ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu nabii asema hivyo now we see the little blood of Jesus Christ could not come upon each one of us because he just has so much blood in his body that it dripped out of uh, out of uh, out of his body into the ground uh, 2000 years ago but to be for a token the life the life that was in the blood was the token now the life that came out of the blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary is our token now that is what the prophet is saying the life is our token now And he said, I'll prove to you just in a minute by the Bible, it is the token that come to uh, to upon each of us to show that we have identified with our sacrifice and we have carried out Jehovah's request. Paragraph 23, the message token 1964 which was preached in Dallas. Nabi anasema hivi, today It isn't the chemical blood of the Lord Jesus Christ our lamb but it is the life that was in the blood which is the Holy Ghost it has come back and is the token and we have accepted and did exactly what God told us to do you see my brethren nabi hapa anasema ya kwamba lakini kwetu Sio hakika tu ile damu iliyomwagika pale msalabani Kalvari miaka elfu mbili iliyopita. Walaki ni yule uhai uliyotoka katika hiyo damu hiyo ndiyo ishara kwetu. Na kwa hivyo kila mmoja wetu anafaa kuwa na uhai wa Mungu ama wa Kristo ndani ya nafsi yake. Utaupataje huo uhai? Ni katika jia ya ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Kwa sababu nabii wako asema ya kwamba Roho Mtakatifu ndiye ishara. Nabii anasema hivi. And then by having the token we are identified 
identified with our sacrifice perfectly. I don't see anything more could be any prayer. See? So the prophet say that the life, I am reading, but it is the life that was in the blood, which is the Holy Ghost. It comes back uh, and it is the token and we have accepted and uh, did exactly what God told us to do. Now, now, the token to the New Testament believer, it is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is what God requires you to have to have been applied the token. So you must have the token of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Kwa hivyo wakati napo wambia, hide yourself under the token. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I can tell you for sure, you are not under the token. You are not protected. And I want to tell you, you are not safe outside the token of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Lazima tujue hivyo. Hiyo ni muhimu sana. Ya kwamba yule mtu ambaye hana roho mtakatifu, mtu huyo hana ishara na mtu huyo ha, ha, hayuko salama na mtu huyo hayuko chini ya uridaji. Kwa sababu gani? Wale waliweka damu wakawa salama, wakawa wamelindwa. Na wewe umeambiwa ya kwamba uwe uwe na Roho Mtakatifu ndio ishara yako ambayo umepewa katika agano jipya. Na utakuwaje salama, utakuwaje chini ya uridaji wa Bwana wakati wewe hauna ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Na kuambia sitaki kundanganya that without the Holy Ghost you are not safe, you are not protected. And I want to tell you if you die without the baptism of the Holy Ghost you are lost. Mungu awabariki sana. So, now Tukijua ya kwamba that uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is our token. And uh, we must know ya kwamba we must have a token of our day. Everybody must have the baptism of the Holy Ghost actually to have, uh, to have been applied the token. And today, if you are not under the token of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you will perish. Even in a time like this, when the, de the developed countries are fighting bacterial and virus warfare, how are you safe, my brother? Wakati huu, ambapo kutuna magonjo ya napita pita hapa kama hii ambayo imekuja katika dunia inaitwa corona. Wewe, uko, unajuaje ya kwamba mungu atakulinda aa, uh, kwa kutokana na madhara haya na sio haya tu na yale yengine mabaya ambayo yatakuja yatakuwa uh, yanakuja duniani I can tell you my brother my sister what the prophet said Nabii wako anasema hivi ya kwamba <coughs> wakati dunia itakapokuwa inaanza vita za ina hii vita kwa ajili ya uchumi wao na wanapigana vita hizi kupitia magonjwa. Nabii alitabiri ingewezekana siku ya leo ya kwamba mataifa yanayoendelea atakuwa napigana vita vya kiuchumi wakitupi, wakitumia bacteria and viruses. <coughs> how are you how do you know that you are safe? Kwa sababu nabii anasema wakati mapigo itakapokuwa ikiangukia ulimwengu na unakumbuka yanapomwagika tulisema last Sunday yanamwagika ikiwa ishara kwetu si mapigo kwetu bali ikiwa ishara ya kwamba uh, bali ikiwa ishara ya kwamba uh, tunaona mwisho wa dunia kwa sababu tulivambiwa tutakapoona mambo haya yakitendeka tujue ya kwamba tumefika mwisho wa dunia kwa hivyo haijakuja kutudhuru sisi haijakuja kututesa sisi lakini imekuja kutuambia mwisho wetu umefika lakini wewe kwa sababu kumbuka wakati wa mitume yes, na nitulioongea mambo hayo siku ya Jumapili Yesu akijua ya kwamba mitume watapitia dhiki na masaibu nyingi kwa ajili ya uh, kuhubiri kwa neno la, la, la Kristo ambao ni ijili aliwaombea akasema Bwana na kuomba ya kwamba wa warinde hawa Kumbuka Yohana kumi na saba mustali wa kumi na tano. Wakati Yesu Kristo alikuwa naombea mitumi ya kiwaacha. Na alikuwa amewapea ile agizo ya kwenda kuhubiri njiri kwa kila kiumbe. Haka sema, buwana, siombe yuli mwengu, bali na waombea hawa. Na wale ambao ni sisi, watakao niamini kupitia maneno ya hawa. 
Kwa hivyo tiari ndugu dada pengine ungetamani sana kama ungeliishi siku za Yesu Kristo angekuombea angekuwekelea mikono ama pengine angekubariki lakini tunaona katika maandiko hayo ya kwamba Yesu Kristo ewe ndugu dada amekuombea kwa sababu alisema siombei hawa tu bali watakao niamini kupitia maneno ya hawa na huyo ni wewe na mimi tumeombewa ili tukaweze kupata ishara ya wakati wetu ambao ni roho mtakatifu bwana asifiwe na wakati mambo haya yanapopita Maombi ambayo Yesu Kristo alifanya katika mstari wa ishirini katika kitabu hicho ambacho nimetaja hapo ni ya kwamba alisema siombi uwaondoe katika ulimwengu huu bali walinde kutokana na yule muofu ni kwa hivyo ndugu dada tuko chini ya uridaji wa Yesu Kristo hata Yesu Kristo amesema hatutaondolewa duniani hii wakati mambo haya yatakapokuwa yana yanatendeka hata hapa katika ulimwengu bali tunaona ya kwamba Yesu Kristo aliomba tulindwe na yeye kwa hivyo tuko na ulidaji wa kutosha lakini hata hivyo kama tuko na ulidaji wa kutosha hatujafauru hatujafanikiwa kama bado hatujaweka ishara ya wakati wetu ambayo ni roho mtakatifu kwa sababu nabii anasema ya kwamba magonjwa haya na mapigo ambayo yataanguka katika dunia siku ya leo na maandiko ya Yesu Kristo Mathayo 24 ambao tulisoma kutakuwa kwa na jaa kutakuwa kwa na magonjwa haya na tiba ufalme utapigana na ufalme na tunaona ya kwamba mataifa yatapigana na mataifa kutakuwa na, na te, matetemeko ya afi mambo hayo ambayo tuliyosoma tukaona ni ishara ya wakati wa mwisho lakini unaona yanapotendeka tuko hapa duniani how are you how, how are you how do you know how are you sure that you are safe from these things and they can do you no harm it is only by applying the token of the baptism of the holy ghost that you can be sure you are already secured under the token it is only uh, after you have the baptism of the holy ghost you can know i am safe and i am protected and there is nothing nothing that can touch me nor harm my house nor my family or anything else because the prophet is say in the message which was preached in 1954 god provided way of healing Chicago Illinois Illinois, Illinois which was preaching on, on Monday paragraph 50, 42 the prophecy what is cancer what is diseases well i want to deal with that in the next five minutes what is cancer what caused that thing let us uh, take a cancer or a thing you wish to take tubercular phenomia uh, whatever i uh, 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 you wish to any disease the prophecy any disease Diseases are germs. That's what the prophet say. Diseases are germs. Sasa hapa ndipo nataka usikize kile nabii anataka kusema. Nabii anasema hivi, let me pass something here quickly as our time is going. Listen, did you know the Bible predicted that in the last day there will be a germ warfare? The diseases will break out upon the people and will fall on everyone without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sikiza vile nabii anasema. Anasema there will be germs war fear and the and, and 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 the diseases will break out upon the people and fall on everyone without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Ikiwa ya kwamba basi bado ugali kanisani na hujabatizwa na Roho Mtakatifu umeweka ishara gani? Kwa sababu ishara ambayo unatakiwa uwe umeweka ni kutafuta na kumpata ujazo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Uhai ambao uliotoka ndani ya ile damu ya Yesu Kristo ni ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu. The person of Jesus Christ is the baptism of the Holy Ghost in you. Na una Roho Mtakatifu na umekuwa kanisani siku nyingi na bado hujaridhika na kuamini ya kwamba unatakiwa kumtafuta Roho Mtakatifu na sasa hapa tunaona ya kwamba wale wakati utakuwa kwa na vita vya kimagonjwa ya aina ya, ya bakteria na virus wale wote ambao hawakuwa chini hawatakuwa chini ya ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu wataweza kuangukiwa na hayo na hayo na hayo ma, magonjwa nabii anasema but with the angel all who had the charge over the prajis was given orders to touch no one whom the mark was why how much 
kind of teachers uh, we have got to be breathing to get in that in that condition to be immune my arms are so now for their doctors has punched me in to in to try to inoculate uh, me from yellow fever and so forth and i told them i didn't need it but they would not listen but now listen to this but i tell you what god is going to do god got a cellar and it is called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when the serum goes in, it will inoculate you, hallelujah, in the last days. That's what the prophet say here. At Angalia, wewe utajuaje ya kwamba uko salama. Wewe utajuaje ya kwamba umelindwa. Wewe utajuaje ya kwamba uko na kinga dhidi ya mambo haya, ya magonjwa, ya vita, ya jaa, mambo ambayo yatatendeka katika ulimwengu. Wewe unajuaje ya kwamba uko salama. Nabii anasema Kitu Mungu atafanya siku hii ya mwisho ni kuwapa watoto wake ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Nabii anasema, angalia, hiyo ndiyo ambayo ni kinga. Na nabii ameongea hapo kuhusu mfano ya kwamba wakati anapopata safari za ndege walikuwa wanamdunga kwa, eh, kwa ajili ya homa ile ya yellow yellow fever ambao watu wanadungu wa sidano kwa ajili ya kuzuia wanaposafiri mataifa mengine na nabii alikuwa anaambia ya kwamba madaktari wasimudunge hana haja nayo kwa sababu yeye alikuwa na kinga ya ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu na nabii anasema hiyo ndiyo kinga itakayo kuzuia nilikwambia ni vizuri kuosha mikono ni vizuri kusanitize ya mikono lakini ukumbuke hiyo haiwezi kuzuia wewe kupata maradhi yoyote itakubidi ya kwamba uwe na ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu kwa sababu tungari tunatangamana na hao watu serikali inatuambia tuweke social distance but you find sometimes ya kwamba umepatikana katika hali mbaya ah, na unaona ina <coughs> inakupata kwa hivyo you does not need all these things and it's good to have all these things in your life it is good to keep social distance it is good to wash your hands regularly but i want to tell you the prophet is saying that is not the salam hiyo sio kinga ile yeye ametoa kwa ajili yako ni mzuri kwa watu walimwengu ambao hawajui kristo lakini kwako wewe nabii anasema mungu atapeana kinga wakati wa mwisho na kinga hiyo ni roho mtakatifu je uko na ubatizo wa roho mtakatifu Hayo mambo tumekuwa tukiongea kama mzaha mzaha tu lakini saa hii tunaona itatubidi tuwe eh, serious na neno la Mungu itatubidi tumakinike katika neno la Mungu oh itakubidi ndugu dada ujue ya kwamba tukifika hali ile Italy, Spain, America imefika wakati na tunaomba Mungu tusifike hapo ndio utajua ya kwamba kwa kweli utahitaji kuwa na kinga kamili Tumekuwa tukiwaambia mzaliwe mara ya pili mjazo na mtakatifu. Tumekuwa tukiwaambia kwamba mtafute ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Na msikubali kupoteza wakati wenu hapa duniani na anasi ya ulimwengu huu. Msikubali kupoteza wakati muhimu ambao Mungu amewapa wakati huu wa mwisho. I want to tell you wakati huu ambao ni mdogo ambao tumeona ishara zote za kuja kwake Bwana na tumeona ya kwamba Bwana alifunuliwa mwaka wa 63 kuja kwake kumefunuliwa kwetu. Tunajua anakuja na sauti ya, na mwaliko na sauti ya malaika mkuu na parapanda. Tunajua ya kwamba tayari uh, mwaliko ambao ni ujumbe ushapita na sasa tunajua ya kwamba kitu kimesalia ni the voice of the archangel which is the prophet said in the message rapture is the voice of resurrection that brings the sleeping saints back to life and when that happen we are going to be change of our bodies also and the, when the trumpet will sound we will be taken to the rapture ndugu dada are you in the rapture in condition do you have enough faith for the rapture because you cannot have faith for the rapture if you don't have the token in your life which is the baptism of the holy ghost we last sunday the prophet saying there is no rapture to them without the baptism of the holy ghost oh i want to tell you you need the baptism of the holy ghost bwana asifiwe sana you are you are not even a christian without the baptism of the holy ghost that's what the prophet said oh hii ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu ni kitu muhimu sana. Hapana rifika kuwa makanisani mwetu kwa muda wote huu. 
na ya kwamba una 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 una, una yumba, yumba na kumanga manga hapa duniani na umelewa na ulefi na masumbufu ya ulimwengu huu kama watu wa ulimwengu ambao hawana tumaini and wewe uko na nu, uko katika nuru unajua ni kitu gani kinahitajika katika maisha ni mwako you know god's requirement in your life when you are here on earth that you came here to be born again and to be filled with the baptism of the holy ghost to be a son of god to be a believer to be a church of god that is going to the rapture to be the bride of jesus christ and you are just wasting your time for nothing with the things of the world tumeona italy wakati walipojua ya kwamba pesa zile walikuwa wanatumia zigari na magonjwa ya covid 19 walitupa hiyo pesa nje umeona hiyo wewe umeona hiyo video pesa zimeanguka katika mitaa ya Italy hakuna mtu wako na haja na pesa pesa haiwezi kuwasaidia na kuambia pesa haitakusaidia utajiri hautakusaidia mali ya ulimwengu hii haitakusaidia lakini ole wako kama utakuwa na kinga ya ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu wewe hata si Mkristo wewe kama hujapata Roho Mtakatifu nabii anasema kuna tofauti ya muam, ya Mkristo ambaye hatusemi ya kwamba hauna nafasi ya kupata Roho Mtakatifu kwa sababu ungali uga, uko hai huu ndio wakati wa kupata Roho Mtakatifu kwa hivyo you still have an opportunity to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You just need to surrender yourself. You just need to yield yourself to God and God is so much for he is going to give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God is going to give you a new nature through the new birth. You just need to seek to tell God, "Oh Lord, I know that I'm not born again and I also know that I am not filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and I know I have no time anymore in this world. Lord, may you have mercy upon me and fill me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Give me the new birth." That is what you need to do time like this the prophets in the message what is the holy ghost which was preached in 1959 he said this listen to this now there is fast difference between just a christian and a holy ghost filled christian there is a difference between just a normal christian in our church and a christian that is already filled with the baptism of the holy ghost what kind of a christian are you in our church are you this just a christian or are you this christian that is filled with the baptism of the holy ghost listen to the prophet now there is vast difference between just a christian and a holy ghost filled christian and now we are going to get this from the scripture and i present exactly in the scripture the first place there is a christian profess to be a christian but if this christian has not yet been filled with the holy ghost he is only in the process of being a christian he is professed to be uh, to believe it he is working on uh, to it but he has not uh, god, but god has not given him this spirit of the holy ghost he is not yet reach that goal with god and god's recognize it unaona Maandiko inasema anabii anatuambia ya kwamba kuna tofauti ya mule muaminio ama Mkristo yule amejaza na mtakatifu na yule hana na mtakatifu. Yule ambaye yuko na mtakatifu huyo ndiye Mkristo. Lakini yule ambaye hajapata roho mtakatifu yeye ni kudai anadai ni Mkristo. Yeye bado anaamini lakini hajafikia lengo lile na Mungu wake la kuwa ya kwamba Mungu ameona imani yake mpaka akampa roho mtakatifu. Uko tofauti yako na yule muaminio ambaye hajapata Roho Mtakatifu. Ule muaminio ama ule Mkristo amepata Roho Mtakatifu tuna tofauti nabii anasema hivyo. Na yule muaminio amepata Roho Mtakatifu huyo ndio ambaye ameapply the token. Huyo ndio akaulidaji wa token. Huyo ndio akaulidaji na ako salama chini ya ishio ishara ya Roho Mtakatifu. Na kuambia ndugu yangu basi itatubidi tukaweze kujua ya kwamba lazima tukaweze kutafuta ishara ya Roho Mtakatifu kwa sababu ishara hiyo ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu ndio hata uhakika wa kukujulisha wewe ya kwamba umepata uzima wa milele the baptism of the holy ghost is the evidence unto you that you have received eternal life and then you are not going to die even if you die god will raise you in the last day that's what the bible say and then you shall not die you shall have eternal life the prophet say in the message token 1964 paragraph 28 and then when 
you take a person that does not believe that the Holy Ghost is for the day, you see what they are doing? They are denying the token, which is the symbol of you being connected with your sacrifice. See what I mean? See what I mean? It is very simple. If you just look at it in the way that God has loaded out now, the blood carried us and we were and were the symbol of the Holy Spirit. And the prophets finish here, we say, that is the life. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is eternal life to you. If you know that you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then you know you have eternal life. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you don't have eternal life yet. You are still trying. And you should try. And be really quick. Be very quick when you are seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because you don't know. Uh, you even don't know what will happen to you tomorrow. Haujui wa corona. utatokezea siku gani. Haujui ya kwamba utaisha siku gani. Haujui kama utatomboa. Kwa sababu, eh, stakimi kusema hivi lakini lazima ni wambie. Tumesikia ya kwamba, imeguza waminio mahali fulani. Hata muaminio mwingine amekufa huko marekani. Na kwa hivi, inaweza kukuguza pia wewe. Hiyo vyo si kusema ya kwamba wewe si mtoto wa mungu kwa sababu umeguzwa. Walio onwa ya kwamba wageenda katika majira, majira hii ya corona, wataenda. Iwe waminio, iwe si waminio. Lakini tunajua ya kwamba tumekingwa sisi. Lakini hata hivyo, ikiwa hii ndiyo jia ile mungu walikusudia upitie. Utapitia. Na unapopitia jia hiyo. Na kufunga macho yako katika usingizi wa mauti. Na kuwekwa kamurini na kusihi tumia wakati huu kuwa na ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu kwa sababu nabii ametuambia hicho hiyo ndio itakuwa ya kwamba ndio uzima wa milele Tumekuwa tukiwahubiria ujumbe huu Tumekuwa tukiwaambia tafteni kuzaliwa mara ya pili na mjazo na Roho Mtakatifu Wengine wenyu hata hamkupatikana siku ya Jumapili or all Wednesday or even in the prayer night meeting to hear these kind of messages. Sasa, nasikia ya kwamba, ikiendelea serikali, it is going to lock you down in your houses. Na, wakati huo, mutakuwa hamutaweza kuenda kazi, biashara, na pilika pilika za maisha yenyu, ambazo ziduwazui ya mpatikane siku ya jumapiri, hizo pilika pilika zikazuia, Mupatikane siku ya Wednesday, mukapatikane siku ya maombi, mumekua hamuna haja na mungu, lakini sahi, hata wale ambawa watu hawamujui mungu, wacha nyinyi wa kristo wa aminio. Hata makafiri wa siyomujua mungu, hata mapresident ambao katika nchi yao, kuna masoga na wasagaji na, wabudi, na wabudiaji wa, wa sanamu. Wanasema wakati huu, hakuna kitu kitacho kutuokoa ispokuwa mungu aje. The, the Prime Minister of Italy alisema hivyo. Watu, hata Kenyata, Uhuru Kenyata, alikuwa juzi ya mesema tuende tukaombe. Wanajua hakuna kitu ambacho kitaweza kutukinga ispokuwa mungu mwenyewe. You must have God. Na wakati huko na uhai, na wakati ambapo uliambiwa uja kanisani, Sio wakati huu tumefungiwa katika manyumbani mwetu. Sio wakati huu kuenda kwetu pilikata pale, we are controlled by this virus. You are supposed to be controlled by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, my brother. The prophets said and the Bible show us that the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Ghost was the guide to guide and lead the children of God, the, 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 the saint, the believers. Now you are controlled by coronavirus because you don't have the Holy Ghost. But if you have the Holy Ghost, you are not controlled by this COVID-19. You are controlled and you are led by God himself. Na saa hii, hizo pilika pilika zako sijui zitaenda wapi. Pilika pilika zako sitaendea pale nyumbani. Itakuwa ni kutoka kitandani, kitchen, kuenda pale kwa table room, kuenda kwa cho. Hiyo pilika pilika yako yote itawekwa kwa hizo sehemu tatu. Na nilikuwa hapo tukiwa pale kanisani tumeonywa. Ya kwamba mungu kuna kitu moja hawezi kufanya. 
Mungu hawezi, God cannot afford to lose his elect. Mungu ukisoma katika ujumbe unaitwa Hebrews anasema wakati alipomuona akamchagua akaweka majina yetu katika kitabu cha mwana kondoo na akatukusudia katika uzima wa milele wakati huo ndio aliyotuokoa na wale wote aliyokoa maandiko inasema amewaona amewahesabia haki amewatakaza amewakusudia na amewatukuza watu kama hao Mungu hawezi kupoteza hata mmoja hata wawe wakora wakora namna gani katika siku ya leo Eh, waaminio nusu tuliona waaminio nusu lakini ni kwa sababu wamechanganya wao imani yao na mambo ya ulimwengu ni waaminio nusu nusu ni wachungaji nusu nusu kwa sababu they have actually mixed their life with the things of the world mix the life of god and the word of god with the things of the world and that makes them the, to be half christian the prophet said that is not god intention that they be half christian now we are pushed kama vile tulionywa pale kanisani ya kwamba Mungu akiona ya kwamba hauwajibiki the responsibility of coping with the message kumbuka tulisoma hiyo in the message a man running for away from the prof, away, running from away from the presence of the Lord the prophet said when the word of your day is revealed then you have nothing else to do than to face the responsibility of coping with the message of your way of your, of your, of your day you must cope with the message Eh, tuliona katika ujumbe mwingine the prophet was telling us we must cooperate with the word of god now you don't have any other opportunity you don't have any other chance this is now the chance cooperate and actually go together with the word of god cope with the message of the hour if you don't do it na kuambia mungu tuliona hale, pale akituona akituonya hatutakiwi kugoja mpaka tusukumwe nabii alikuwa anasema saa zingine tukikuwa goi goi na tunangoja sana god may permit uh, a state of emergency in our life so that he can push us in a hard way to believe him in the message that is called desperation which was preached in 1963 paragraph 45 this is what the prophet say usually it take a state of emergency to throw us into desperation It is too bad it has it has to do it has to do that but human beings are so slothful in their mind that it takes an emergency something that rises and when they when they do it throws them into desperation and there uh, and there uh, uh, it throws them into desperation and really in doing that in desperation it brings out that real thing that you are It, it it shows that you are it shows what you are made of out of in the time of desperation it usually pulls out the good things that is in you in the time of death i have had people when they know that they were they know that they are dying the thing they have kept secret in their life in desperation they were trying to confess it and try to, uh, 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 and try to take this and make it right God please and God do. Yeah, see in desperation. They ought to have done that beforehand. See, not to wait until the time of emergency. You will do uh, will you do so and so for, will you do so and so for me? The emergency causes desperation. When you ought to do without the emergency. That's what the prophet said. You are supposed to do these things without an emergency. Coronavirus is just a state of emergency to the believers. It's awakening up a state of emergency to the believers to remind them that this is not their home. This world is not your home. You are a pilgrim and you are a sojourner. Your home is in heaven. You must prepare yourself to meet your Lord. And don't you prepare to meet your Lord without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Meet you with your Lord having a pride the token which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And if you don't do that Right now God will push you on hard way to do it. The prophet say akwamba Mungu he will permit crossroads. Mungu hata kama ataua mtu ataua. Kama hiyo ndio itakuleta kwa Mungu. Mungu kata, kama ni kuleta magonjwa kama haya ya coronavirus ataleta. Kama hiyo ndio itakusukuma wewe kuja kwa Mungu. Mungu atakubali majaribio. 
inje katika maisha ni mwetu kutusukuma sisi kuamini ya kwamba ya ni Mungu na Mungu lazima tumwamini kwa njia yote ile na kama hatutaweza kujisalimisha kwa neno la Mungu Mungu atakusukuma kwa, kwa nguvu zake yeye anajua ni wapi atakufinyafinya maisha ni mwako na utajikuta unajisalimisha wakati ambao unapitia dhiki na masaibu na uchungu mwingi sana kwa nini wakati huu ambao uko na afya nzuri na uko salama usijipeane kwa Kristo na ukaweza kumutumikia kwa nini Usi, usisalimishe maisha yako kwa Kristo saa hii Kwa nini usijisalimishe? Kwa nini usipeane maisha yako kwa Kristo? Kwa nini usi, usijisalimishe kwa neno la Bwana? Ili Bwana naye akawa na nafasi ya kufanyia kazi katika maisha ni mwako. Kwa sababu aliko inasema kazi aliyeanza yeye ndiye atakayemaliza. Hakuna mwingine atamaliza. Naambia anasema he may permit close road. He may permit close road to try us to perfect us for his services he may permit now the church both here and on the table he may angalia mlikuwa mmeonekana he may permit the church both here and on the table and we are on the table now uh, the crossroad in our lives the crossroads in our lives for his services like he did uh, to uh, old daniel like he did to daniel he gave daniel a little crossroad one day you know what he uh, you know he was a great man down in babylon he did let me uh, he let the king turn against him and throw him in the lion's den it only perfected him sure did then the whole, the hebrew children going to the fiery furnace what they they was determined to stand for his word he permit that close land close uh, close words let me uh, let them laugh at you having a long hair let them laugh at you say that you become a holy ruler or whatever more it may they may let you they may they may let you laugh they may laugh at you for that that is right that is the crossroad a little junction that is to prove something see and the only thing the crossroad the crossroad did to the hebrew children it is stood on the wall it only loosened them from the the birds that they were around their feet and the legs sometimes i'm still reading sometimes it takes hard trials to break the bars of the world from us sometimes it takes the trials actually to shake us away from the world and the prophet continue here to say sometimes god let us have little trial you know to see what you, you, you what we will do to take out of the world to take out of the world the other worlds let have at a little trial and knock you out of the organization and that the idea the methodist is the only one the only group they got if you don't believe like it, if you don't believe it you don't believe it at all sometimes he lets a little trial happen maybe you got a sick baby uh, the, uh, maybe you got a sick baby maybe something take a place light at the hour of death that's what the prophet say maybe someone uh, taken from you or something that is what to do it will break you away to show you something that open your eyes and the prophet say ni aibu sana ya kwamba sisi tukiwa tumepewa wakati mzuri wa kujitayarisha hapa duniani na kujisalimisha kwa Mungu tunangojanga mpaka mambo haya ya majaribio na ya masu, misukumo kutukujia katika maisha yetu. Nabii anasema ya kwamba ni aibu sana ya kwamba tunakosa kuji, eh, tunakosa kumwamini Mungu, ni aibu sana ya kwamba tunakosa kumwa, kumutegemea Mungu na kujisalimisha katika neno lake mpaka tunangoja mambo haya ya kuja katika maisha ni mwetu. It is a shame. That's what the prophet say in the message the, in the message uh, that was preached in 1959 thinking on our way which was preached in 1959 the prophet said this and it is a shame that we have to be pressed into the presses to make us accept it what an enemy we have yes it's an arch enemy and it is good to turn to the lord before this trouble strike listen to the prophet 
Nabi anakuonya ati ni aimu ya aina gani ya kwamba tunagoja yanga mpaka tufinywe ili tukaweze kuikubali neno la Bwana. Wakati ambao tuko na nafasi ya kukubali neno la Bwana kabla mambo haya hayajatokea. Now most of the time it is that it is the troubles that make people come to the Lord. But it should come, but the, we should come before they strike. Nabii anasema hivyo. Ati wakati mwingi ni mashida, ni misukumo, ni majaribio inayowafanya watu kuwafanya uamuzi wa kuja kwa Mungu. Na Nabii anasema tunatakiwa kujisalimisha kwa Mungu wakati mambo haya hayajatufikia. Wakati mambo haya hayajakuja katika maisha ni mwetu tunatakiwa kuwa tayari tumejisalimisha kwa Mungu. Tunatakiwa kuwa tayari tumepata uh, ishara. Sasa nakuambia hata baada ya hii COVID-19 I want to tell you ya kwamba kutakuwa na, na magonjwa mengine <coughs> shida itakuwa katika duniani vita vitaendelea mataifa yatapigana na mataifa hata tunasikia ya kwamba cha, chama cha uh, mataifa ya dunia kikisema ya kwamba mataifa ambayo yanapigana yaache kupigana kwanza ili kwanza mataifa hayo yashughulikie ugonjwa huu wa, wasi, wasiwe wanapigana na wanagojeka na wanakufa kwa hivyo wakiuana na wanauawa na, ma, na magonjwa wataisha wanajaribu kusihiwa na chama cha mataifa duniani ya kwamba wawache vita washughulikie magonjwa lakini angalia wadugu wa dada huu sio wakati wa kuwa katika mambo ya ulimwengu huu ni wakati wa kumtafuta Mungu Bwana akubariki nataka kuamini ya kwamba Mungu amekuhifadhi chini ya neema zake hautakiwi kugoja mpaka wakati huu wa kusukumwa na Mungu hebu ni tuombe Mungu awabariki Baba wetu wa mbinguni katika jina la Bwana Yesu Kristo. Ni asanti kwa sababu hali hii ya ugonjwa huu imeleta hali ya dharura katika maisha ni mwetu ya kwamba kuona Mungu anaweza kuachilia kitu kiingia katika ulimwengu mzima na kumaliza watu kama vile atakavyomaliza ulimwengu huu. Lakini tunajua mambo haya yanapotendeka Bwana ulisema hatutaondolewa katika dunia hii lakini ulisema Bwana utatulinda. Na hivyo hata saa hii Bwana wakati ambao hatujui ya kwamba janga hili litakaa mpaka muda gani katika dunia. Oh Bwana twakuomba ya kwamba utaweza kuwalinda watakatifu wote wa ushirika wa Jericho. Na sio tu washirika hawa bali tuko na waaminio wengine katika vitongoji vyote vya dunia. O oh, baba wangu wa mbinguni katika jina la Mwana Yesu Kristo tunasimama katika pengo kwa ajili yao na kuweka ishara ya Roho Mtakatifu na kuomba Bwana wetu wa mbinguni katika jina la Yesu Kristo walinde na uwatenganishe na janga hili na watakuwa wamefanya uamuzi wa kusalimisha maisha yao kabisa kwako ewe mwokozi wetu Yesu Kristo na watakuwa Bwana wamefanya uamuzi maisha ni mwao ya kwamba hatapoteza wakati mdogo ambao umewapea hapa duniani na anasi ya ulimwengu huu na ulafi na masumbuko ya dunia hii lakini bwana wetu wa mbinguni wataweza Mungu wa rehema kuweza kuangalia kuweka ishara katika maisha yao iwi wae salama tusaidie bwana tujui bwana watu wa mbinguni itachukua muda gani lakini ombi langu moja ni hili ya kwamba utawalinda watoto wako utalinda nchi yetu bwana wetu wa mbinguni utalija taifa yetu bwana tunajua ya kwamba shetani hawezi kuharibu dunia hii wakati ambapo bibi harusi yuko hapa bwana na kwa hivyo tuna uhakika ya kwamba hakuna kitu kibaya kitaenda kutendekea watoto wa Mungu hivyo na waweka chini ya miguuni mwako bwana na waweka chini ya mabaya ulidaji wako bwana ili ukawalinde Mungu wetu wa mbinguni wabariki na chakula kama kungewekwa bwana ahali ya kutotoka na iwe ya kwamba wengine hawana chakula hawana chakunywa bwana wa mbinguni katika jina la Yesu Kristo ulituambia utatulisha na utatunyweza na utatupea manguo na mahali pa kukaa na kwa hivyo ninaamini wakati huu tunahitaji hii haya sana utaweza kujalia kila ndugu kila dada awe na kitu cha kumsaidia maisha ni mwake ndio maombi yetu bwana tawasaidia kutafuta ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu kwa sababu hiyo ndio ishara itakayowatenganisha na hukumu itakayowatenganisha na kifo itakatenganisha na kaburi itatenganisha na kuzimu wasaidie wanapojitayarisha 
kwa ajili ya kutafuta uso wako katika maisha ni mwao wabariki na baraka zote za kimwili wabariki na baraka zote za kiroho wape bwana wa mbinguni kila kitu ambacho wanatafuta kama kuna wangonjwa uwaponye wanaotaka miujiza ya aina aina ya kiroho na ya kimwili ukaweze kuwapea katika jina la bwana Yesu Kristo tunaomba na kuamini mungu awabariki taonana siku ya wednesday ya sunday